Good day viewers and welcome to this week's edition of Erongo Talk. I am Precious Nitanafo and I will be your presenter for today where we bring you the news, the weather and interview as well as your weekly sports update. Please stick around for the rest of the show. Hello kijkers and welcome by today's episode of Erongo Talk. I am your host Frida Molotu. I'm your host Alain Joannes. Bring us for you the news, the weather and Ik is nog steeds betrokken bij Sparta zelf. Die weer is mooi. Hier om te wezen. Ondersteun ons. Ons gaan willen troost maken. Zet gerust terug en geniet hier de episode met ons. And in today's news, drugs valued over 80,000 Namibian dollars were confiscated recently in Wolfish Bay. Two drug busts were made by the police in the Irongo region in the past week. Warrant officer Tuyeni Kelwa Tashia confirmed that suspects were found in possession of drugs during a police operation on Tuesday, 12th of March 2024 at about quarter to ten in a house in Stamney Yoma Avenue in Wolfish Bay. 80 Mandrax tablets and 1,336 grams of cannabis valued at 76,400 were confiscated. According to Tashia, she says we arrested a Namibian female age 28 and a male suspect age unknown which is still at large. In a second bust made on Tuesday, a Namibian male aged 34 was arrested during an intelligence-led police operation on 12th of March at about 4.30 in a flat at Kalahari Courts in Narabal, Wolfish Bay. He allegedly had seven full and four halves of Mandrake tablets, 23 units of suspected crack cocaine and 113 grams of cannabis. The estimated value of the drugs is valued at $9,030. Now that was definitely a great effort by the Namibian police with the confiscation as uh, there has been an increase in the rise of drug consumption within the region. Now moving on, the 13th Association of Municipal Electricity Understandings of Southern Africa took place recently in Stockholm. Let's have a look. The AMU is encouraged by the work, as I said, uh, done uh, uh, thus far as the Minister has said, and we look forward uh, to the regulator, uh, of course, guided by the policymaker and, uh, uh, and all stakeholders towards the remaining uh, rights become a reality. Because it's through them that you are able to, to extend that reach of ensuring that you are realizing universal access and access, access, access to electricity to the all part of our country, a, a citizen as such. We must continue the electricity control board and empower to play a critical role and show that this becomes a reality. I call on all of us to commit to ensure that we play our collective roles or collaborative roles between ourselves, business and government and utilities towards addressing the energy poverty in this country and in South Africa. We might be value sitting at 92% energy access in South Africa. But if I tell you that in the city that I come from, I've got in excess of over 500 informal settlements. Not people, informal settlements. President of the AMEU, President Mushita, definitely encouraged stakeholders to participate and pass in the process of the TID rollover, which is set to take place, or rather um, conclude on the 24th of November 2024. Now, finally, the BIPA CEO, Vivian Kashiungwa, highlighted the importance of safeguarding the rights of indigenous communities. Let's have a look. Our collective presence here as WIPO member states underscores the importance of addressing the complex interplay between intellectual property and genetic resources and the need for a robust international instrument that strikes a balance 
between promoting innovation and safeguarding the rights of indigenous communities. As we prepare for the upcoming diplomatic conference in May this year, it's important that our deliberations are not only insightful, but also constructive, fostering an environment which is conducive to reaching a fruitful outcome. Namibia as a country has been very proactive in the development of a legal and policy framework to protect traditional knowledge and genetic resources. These include the access and benefit sharing framework, which aims to ensure equitable sharing of benefits which are derived from the use of genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge. Uh, BIPA, um, in collaboration with WIPO, in September 2023 hosted a workshop on traditional knowledge, which was aimed at informing the, uh, the traditional community um, and the practitioners how they can protect their traditional knowledge through, intellect, through the IP system. This, in our view, highlighted the importance of a knowledge economy on the traditional knowledge and WIPO's commitment. Well, now, this was definitely a great initiative by VIPA and the World Intellectual Property Organization in an effort in safeguarding traditional knowledge as well as genetic resources. That does bring us to the end of our news for today. But please stick around for our sports news with Emerita Shikesho coming up next. Hello, Namibia! Ons is very kus en ons is lus. Wie is jy? Spitskoppe. Man, you pick a plate. Hey, I'm actually going to What plan are you for us to fool you? And the other cat will play for my scalp. Yeah, good. You can see the sun shines. It's like a beer. So, we see all the December gevoel in on. First hand starts. The shark anglers. Welcome to Namibia, where adventure meets tranquility. With Enjoy, you have access to a wide range of accommodations to suit every traveler's taste and budget. Experience the finest dining and hospitality Namibia has to offer. Booking your dream accommodation is just a few clicks away with Enjoy. Join thousands of happy travelers who have trusted Enjoy for their Namibian getaway. Your gateway to unforgettable Namibian adventures. Visit us today at enjoy.my.na and Mr. Anthony Van Veek used to play for Blue Water for many, many years. It was one of the stalwarts that we ever had. One of the greatest players with that left, dangerous left footed. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the donation that was made by Mr. Anthony Van Veek. So, Mr. Van Veek, thank you so much for this. We really appreciate it. And we hope the rest of the companies will emulate your, your example. And uh, the next, they will just follow me. Thank you so much, Mr. Fabric. For more news, visit our socials or our website page www.erongo.com.na. After the break, we have our interview, so stay tuned. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Tourismus Broadcast. My name is Jemai Mandibela and I'm here to take you on a tour all over Namibia through our three segments, namely Topics, Destinations and To The Point. My name is Frank Steffen, I am natürlich the Redakteur von der Allgemeinen Zeitung.
pleasure for me to be here today and to address this important gathering. I am delighted to be afforded this opportunity to be with you and share with you as at the annual association of electricity distributors undertaking AEGU technical conference 2024. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by delving into the fundamental policy drivers that underpin the evolution of Namibia's energy landscape. At its core, our government's policy thrust to enhance local generation capacity is directed by the National Integrated Resource Plan and other policies. One of them is the Harambe Prosperity Plan number two that calls for local generation to increase from 624 megawatts to 879 <coughs> megawatts by the year 2025. In addition to that policy, our policies gear to improve security of supply, review the electricity market model, and ensure the viability of transmission and distribution networks. This underscores our commitment to advancing access to modern energy, particularly in rural areas and as advocated by universal access to electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, considering the conference theme, it is essential to emphasize the crucial role of distribution network in advancing access to electricity. The viability of transmission and distribution networks is paramount to realizing our electrification goals. Therefore, initiatives aimed at ensuring the sustainability of these networks through innovation and technology are pivotal. We acknowledge and appreciate the efforts of the AEGU in this regard, and the Ministry stand ready to collaborate further to advance social economic development through electrification. Looking ahead, the government's mission as outlined in the national electrification policy is to achieve universal access to electricity by 2040. This ambitious goal necessitates the embrace of innovation and technology by the distribution sector. As we strive to connect approximately 630,000 households by 2040 with a significant portion through off-grid technologies, innovation becomes imperative. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, the success of our electrification endeavors is intricately linked to several key policy drivers including regional and international cooperation, economic and social upliftment, and energy-related research, development, and innovation. These drivers underscore the interconnectedness of our efforts and the need for collaborative action to realize our objectives. Ladies and gentlemen, regarding the ministerial direction on EDI reform resolutions of 2023, our resolve remains steadfast. We aim to complete the reform as envisioned in the 1998 White Paper on Energy by establishing all five regional electricity distributors, the REDS. The progress with REDS like Erongo Red, No Red, and Seno Red demonstrates our ambition and resilience. However, challenges remain 
notably in funding for local authorities and their integration into the Reds. The 2030 EDI Summit was crucial in addressing these challenges. The summit outlined objectives to streamline the sector and enhance efficiency, promote rural and urban electrification, and foster economic growth. However, challenges such as license consolidation, harmonization of tariffs, and governance issues were also recognized during the summit. The summit resolved to establish the Envision Five Reds with a modified shareholding structure for the Central Red and the incorporation of remaining local authorities and regional councils into Senoret. The next step includes implementing these resolutions, reviewing license conditions and focusing on the national electrification policy for funding electrification. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we forge ahead, I call upon each of you and each of us to actively participate in shaping our energy future. Let us embrace the opportunities that are presented by innovation and technology to ensure a sustainable, efficient, and equitable electricity distribution sector. We should always remember that sound infrastructure is a catalyst and fuel for industrialization and economic growth that we so much need in the quest to recover from the COVID pandemic. I wish you all productive deliberations and look forward to the outcomes of this conference. And before I say thank you,
it's closed, but it's yet so far. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of today's episode of Erongo Talk. Please make sure to visit our website for more on these stories. That is at www.erongo.com.na. Also, make sure to have a look at us on our DSTV channel. That is channel 285 and go to channel 25. Follow our Facebook pages as well to keep in touch with the rest of us. Goodbye. Thank you.